Sophia James. Hello. <laughs> Hello. We uh we we've been talking for about 25 Long minutes. Long time no see. <laughs> <laughs> and uh we found out that like there were some technical difficulties where the recording I, wasn't happened. We're not going to say it we're was not going to say on whose end. <laughs> it was my fault. It was my fault 200% and I Luckily apologize. we didn't we did we we didn't go in too deep. We caught it pretty early. <laughs> so, um ay, ay, ay. The recap was Oh, Idol still lets the contestant really have the final say. You guys had mm. designers that kind of like helped you with the background of everything when you guys were performing. Yes. Um, and you guys, you said you- Over Zoom, over Zoom. Over Zoom. Yeah. And you guys said that uh, <laughs> you guys had like 20 Zoom meetings a day or just like tons of Zoom meetings a day yeah. with everybody to get you set up. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> when it actually did start, like when it was all ready to go and it was time, was, were there technical difficulties there or were there nerves? Like, was everything so set that you didn't worry about it or were there nerves associated with like the tech stuff? I still got nervous, um, because, um, well, the way it works is we have three takes, um, for camera angles essentially so that we can like get different angles and things um but the second take is always the audio take that they use so we still technically only get one shot yeah. at singing the song you know yeah the best to the best of our abilities um so whenever it got to that second take i would always kind of get nervous you know, because they would come on our in-ear monitors and be like, all right, like, this is it. This is the take. Here we go. And I'd be like, this is it. This is the take. You know, <laughs> if, if, if I mess this up, like, I mess it up. And that's what they use. Right. Um, so, yeah, I, I still definitely had an element of nerve um, flowing through me. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It was, it was a <laughs> cool experience. Were there nerves, like, connected to the, the techie side? Like, a hope the connection doesn't go bad or I hope something doesn't go wrong or Le um, it was less you guys connected to the techie down. side of things because well, if something went wrong, then yeah, on the tech side of things, then they would m most likely, you know, give us another oh, shot of course. and say, look, of course, you know. <laughs> that's a great point. Of course. <laughs> but of course, but of course. if it's, if it's something that we mess up ourselves, then it's like no dice, you know, that's what you sung and, and yeah, that's what's going in the show. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think I heard any, I don't think anybody had any like huge, oh crap, mistakes in their second. Yeah, not not that I heard. I mean, I, I did have, you know, a couple, a couple times when we filmed stuff, I was like, man, like, I wish they used the third take instead of the second take because like my third take was like worlds better than my second take, you know, it was just little things like yeah. that. But I fortunately didn't like, you know, crack on any of my notes or, or forget the lyrics or anything. Oh yeah. Very fortunately. <laughs> oh yeah. I, it's funny. Um, so when I was on, I don't think I learned, I think I, I think I learned one song of all the performances. Everything else was something that I'd already learned before, just because I had a lot. I had more time than most people because I was the, I was the very first contestant to audition for the judges in the first city of the whole season. So I was like, oh, right. I, I was the first that, yeah. person that the judges saw at all. And then I had like three or four months until Hollywood week. So I just, one of the producers was there that was talking to me and he's like, listen, my advice to you, learn as many songs as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay. So I went back <laughs> and also for me, part of it was because, um, I barely made it to Hollywood. Like I, w I, I, I got a, um, Clark Beckham, one of the greatest I, of our time. <laughs> I barely made it to Hollywood. Yeah. Right. That, that shows you a lot about, um, the, the big range of talent. On yeah. The, I don't know. I, I don't let go really early on. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but I sang, this is a man's world, James Brown and sang it well i mean i felt like i sang it well and then i listened back and i was like yeah that's what i wanted to happen like that that's what i was going for um and keith urban was like huh, um why did you pick that song why did you choose that song and i was like well it, 
it's uh real sh- soulful and sh- and and gritty um and he's like yeah the soul and the grit was what i didn't get any of and i remember going oh <laughs> oh great like that's like <laughs> Like that's like <laughs> that's like Sorry. some like you that's like you singing and someone being like you like singing and like let's say you you audition with the full performance of in my room and that's like them being <laughs> like yeah I just feel like I wish you would have played like I just feel like you wish would have played piano a little nicer and you would have had some <laughs> dynamics it's like I feel like those are the strengths of, so it's like I thought that those are my strengths. Uh, and he's like, I didn't get any of it. I was like, okay. And then Harry Connick Jr. was like, um, yeah, I, I think you're talented, but I don't think you're ready. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say no. <laughs> and I was like, oh no. Oh <laughs> I thought I was gonna, honestly, I thought I was gonna like fly through. I did personally, and that maybe that was pride, but I thought I was gonna go in and go through easily and, uh, because I've watched the show and I thought I was as good as I've seen other people go through. So I was like, yeah. I think this won't be a problem. And then Keith was like, you know what? <laughs> I was going to say something, but I'm, you know what? I'm going to say yes. I'm like, oh, gee golly. Thank you for your charity, sir. Um, oh my gosh. And then JLo almost said no. And, and I, I mean, <laughs> oh I gosh. barely made it through. So I was like, I had like a fire lit underneath me. So I, I learned oh like, my gosh. and then I, you ended up getting runner up. So, <laughs> you know, and I wanted, I wanted, there you go. <laughs> this is, this is probably vain, but I wanted Harry to like bring up the fact that he told me no. And now that, oh and like, gosh. and he yeah. was wrong or he was whatever, uh, you know, like I wanted him to be sure, like, you know sure. what? In our audition, I said, but, um, he never did. And that's no problem. But, Man, I I'm sort of fully convinced that they just said that for the drama of the show. I mean, because I think if anyone goes back and watches your audition, it's pretty darn flawless, you know, <laughs> and it has a lot of grit and soul in it. You know, it's just very evident. Well, thank and you. It just there. It doesn't make any logical sense that that they would think that, you know, well, Actually, <laughs> b- believe it or not, because that's what most people would think, and that makes sense, and it's TV show, those things happen, but I think the producers are actually very surprised by what the judges were saying. I think they put me hmm. first, because the producers, like, the producer rounds of auditioning, I was, like, killing, and they were loving me. Like, I, they love me, I love them, I made them laugh, they made me laugh, it was a great time. Nice. <laughs> and it was like, okay, I think they saw me as like the guy in that day. And mm-hmm. so they're like, we're going to, this is going to be the first episode. We want to put him as the first contestant to go in to see the judges. We want to kick it off strong. That's what I think. We're going to go in and he's going to knock it out of the park. It's going to be great. Send him in. And then they were like, mm, <laughs> ah, mm, mm. and so because of that, oh they didn't show me as the first contestant of the season. I think that was their plan, but when the Whoa. judges like did that, the producers were like, well, crap. So I think, I don't think <laughs> it was the producers egging them on to make things dramatic, right? I think they just didn't like it. Interesting. I mean, but, well, I don't know. I don't know the science behind that then. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. And who, you know, definitely no regrets because honestly, if I would have sailed through, I would not have prepared so hard and I would not have been as good as I was when I did mm. go to Hollywood week and throughout the rest of the show, cause I had something to prove, you know, for the rest of the time. And I was like, I had a chip on my shoulder. And when everybody oh, else was sure, like going sure. out and after we would get back from, from um, where we were filming, like I would, everyone else would go out and see friends or hang out and whatever. And I would go to, I, I made them, <laughs> they didn't have a rehearsal room with any instruments in it. And I like bugged them and bugged them and bugged them until they got like a hospitality room in the hotel where we could go practice. And I was the only one to oh, use cool. it, I think. Uh, I might be wrong in that. I think other people might have used it, but I mean, I Man. I was in there all the time. So that's, oh my gosh. 
but again yeah i remember i remember you telling me that too like before i started this whole journey that like there was you know once it got to the left or once you were in the hotel or wherever you guys were um yeah that there were no instruments so i i had remembered that when it was time for us to move into our apartments for live shows and so i brought my guitar and i brought my midi keyboard because i was like yes if i am playing an instrument like i have to have time and a way to practice because i'm there's no way and i remember you telling me that you you just one one time you didn't have a keyboard so you sat at the desk and just like, imagined a keyboard being there and, and that's how you practiced yeah i was like i can't do that i can't do that that's <laughs> so, that like there's no way that was so, when so yeah i that, sorry that sorry, was when ahead. that was when we moved to another hotel for the finale and i was practicing taking a, uh taking it to the streets that i was supposed to sing with yeah, michael mcdonald that's right right <laughs> a brand new oh arrangement that never played before never heard before and i get it sent to me and i'm at a hotel so i go to the desk and pretend there's a piano there and just pretend and listen through with my headphones then i get there Michael McDonald walks in the room and he's like, Hey, how you doing now, everybody? You know, he's in a Hawaiian like t shirt or Hawaiian like butt button up shirt and nice. uh, just real nice and unassuming. He's like, Okay, hey. And he sits down and he goes, uh, You know how this goes? And I'm thinking, Yes, sir. I'm thinking he knows how <laughs> it goes and he's wondering if I came prepared. And my answer is, Yes, I came prepared, Sir Michael mm. McDonald, <laughs> legend yeah. that you are. I'm ready. He goes, okay, because I don't know how this goes. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. So I ended up having to teach Michael McDonald oh his own arrangement that I learned the night before on a desk. Oh, geez. The day of. That's the day of. The day of the finale. The day <laughs> we were supposed to do it. The day we did it. That is a story for the books right there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but it was, uh, that might have been actually the biggest moment for me in Idol was singing with him on the finale. Like I, I just remember, cause we're doing a lot of these things and some people have the gift of when, when you're doing, when you're doing big things oh, like- shoot. I'm so sorry to interrupt again. My phone- <laughs> You're good. Just, my phone just ran out of storage that's fine forget the phone is... we're not going to use the phone really are you sure yeah yeah this video is really good and you're looking at the camera so i'm thinking i'm going to use this too all right okay no I'm worries gonna disregard the phone no sorry worries. about all the technical no 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 you're good you're 100 percent good <laughs> but some people when we're going through like crazy things like idol some people have the gift of taking it in as it happens and really, you know, stopping to smell the flowers, that kind of a thing. And I think I was doing that most of the time, but I was doing it fully, like at full capacity, taking it in. When we were playing, I was playing, taking it to the streets on this beautiful Yamaha giant, a zillion foot piano. And I look over to my left and Michael McDonald's playing next to me. <laughs> on and I'm just, yeah. and I look at him, I'm like, I have the best seat in the world. <laughs> like that's Michael McDonald doing his Michael McDonald thing. You know what I mean? That's crazy. But. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And I learned it on a desk the day of, no, no. I taught him his arrangement that I learned on a desk the night before the day we did it. Man, that's Stupid. the kind of thing I that bums me out a little bit about this season is like we didn't get to have any of those kinds of moments you know yeah. like um we missed the whole like you know celebrity mentor episodes and and getting to sing with all these legends and yeah man but it you know hurts me still too. fun though and i'm just <laughs> still thinking like but maybe they can maybe 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 they can t do it next time like you guys can come and I don't know. It's like, I don't know. Yeah, like, come all, on. All, you know, like all the top 10, we have like a little group chat. And we're like, we have to try to convince production to let us come back next year and just perform one song together on the stage, you know? Oh, totally. <laughs> Hopefully they'll let us. Totally. That would totally <laughs> yeah. make sense. Oh, yeah. I mean, you got to fight with the budget people to bring you guys all back. 
<laughs> totally. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, um, enough of idle stuff. What I really want to talk <laughs> to you about and um, what I've been excited about just with this podcast is just to talk um, like music stuff. Well, first, a lot of people wonder and ask how we met, which has been a very funny and long, a long story. Interesting story. <laughs> But the year was 2016, I believe. Makes sense. Uh, the location was my good friend Lexi's backyard at her 16th birthday party, yep. I believe. Yep. Um, the occasion was her 16th birthday party. <laughs> um, the performer was Clark Beckham. Um he was there and he had his guitar and we were a bunch of choir kids. And, um, this was like the coolest party ever, mind you. Like we had never experienced anything like this. As, it was like dope. a bunch of like 16, 17 year olds. Um, so there was Clark Beckham in the background, in the, in the backyard, um, just like playing a set. And we were all like, Oh my gosh. So, you know, naturally all like 60 or whatever of us, um, huddle, just like huddled over and just were completely mesmerized by the legend that is Clark Beckham as he sung through his glorious set list. <laughs> um, and uh, Clark, uh, you uh, at one point were like, does anyone want to come up and sing with me? Because we were, you know, you had sort of caught on to the fact that we were a bunch of choir nerds and, and we were kind of like harmonizing along to you at some points and you were like, oh, okay, you guys are singers. Um, <laughs> no, you don't sound like that. That's not my impression of you. Um, I promise. Uh, and uh, you were like, does anyone want to come up and sing with me? And um, so a couple people went up and sang with you. And then some people were like, like, Sophia, you should go. And I was terrified. I was like, no, I don't want to sing with Clark Beckham because he's going to think I'm terrible because he's <laughs> Clark Beckham and his standards are so much higher than that. Um, oh. So, you know, I, some of my friends just sort of like shoved me on, on the stage. And I was like, oh, hello, you know, nice to meet you. And you were like, hi, what do you want to sing today? And I was like, ah, I don't know. Do you know Ain't No Sunshine, a Bill Withers? And you are like, sure. And then um, so you played and I sang Ain't No Sunshine. Um, and then and that was like so cool and so fun. I, I might still have the video of it somewhere. I'll see if Whoa. I can pick that up. That'd be really funny. Oh, you <laughs> just like it. this tiny little like choir kid. Just be like, meep, 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 meep. Ain't no sunshine <laughs> when she's gone. That's exactly <laughs> how I sound it too. No. Um, and then afterwards, after your set had finished and everything, um, everyone was just sort of like mingling and um, and uh i think you were talking with lexi's dad or something and i i crossed by the room and um and lexi's dad was like oh this is sophia she's one of the soloists in the and you were like oh yeah you sang ain't no such like the, that was really good you were really fantastic and i was like wow wow thank you um and then you were like do you like play at all and i was like oh, i play piano a little bit you were like, oh my gosh, could I hear you sing something on piano? And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like, you know, I, I haven't prepared anything. <laughs> um, but so we went into like the music room, which had the piano in it. And I, I don't know, I think I probably sang like a Nora Jones tune or something. Cause that's usually my go-to. Mm. Mm. Um, and you were like, oh wow, like that was really great. That was awesome. And then you sort of gave me like an impromptu piano lesson. Um, and I was just sort of like out of body the entire time. I was like, Clark Beckham is giving me a free piano lesson right now. Like, Clark Beckham. <laughs> and I was like, oh, cool. Like, this is, this is not the craziest thing that's happened to me ever. Um, so uh, then that was that. And I learned a, a ton. Um, and I was like, wow, that was, I went home just like, that was the coolest thing that's ever happened to me. And then. Um, sorry, if you want to interject at any point, I feel like I've been talking. For I a long do want time. to interject on one thing. Um, I do want to interject on one thing. Sure. I remember singing, and I've told you this, but I remember walking in, and I was not aware that you guys weren't used to this. I was like, oh, I guess this is just the way they live life. Like, time <laughs> to have a party. This is the bougiest thing I've ever seen. 
I'm in like Southern California. I guess this is the way they live life. Like this is crazy. <laughs> um, so I came in, I was like, okay, this is dope. But I came in like, all right, I'm the singer. Here I am. They paid money to fly me here and for me to sing. And I'm gonna sing at this birthday party. And it looks like these people know who I am. So that's a plus. <laughs> and here we go. And I started singing thinking I was the singer there. And then I heard, like you said, I heard you guys like start harmonizing. I was like, oh, oh, these people can sing. Not only can they sing like <laughs> harmony, but they can like sing, sing. Like, oh, okay. So <laughs> then you're right. I asked if someone would come up sing. You started singing. And I was like, oh, oh, oh I am oh not the gosh. singer here. Not, and I, like what I mean is the singer. Like I'm not the <laughs> singer here. There's a bunch of the singers here. Like there's a bunch of for real, for real singers here. <laughs> And this random person that just walked up, uh, and I and I, I I perceived you to be like the ringleader singer, like the singer of the what? group. Because right when I was like, does anybody want to sing with me? Everyone was like, Sophia, 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 Sophia. <laughs> and so I was like, all right, great. Okay, I guess she's she's the one. She's the pack leader vocally. Oh, she's no. the one. No. Nope. And so well, see, that's <laughs> you can't say no. Sense. It's not really arguable because everyone immediately was like, you so so you came up saying uh and i was blown away and then when i saw you go play the piano um or, or i asked if you play piano i can't remember exactly how it went down and you started singing and then i start, heard you play piano and this time you weren't singing along to a guy playing acoustic guitar at your friend's birthday party like now like when you sit at the piano no one else is in an vision of you like people are around you're in a you're in a space but really the only thing you're looking at and feeling is the keys right in front of you and you're at home, mm -hmm. no matter where you are, whether you're at home, whether you're across the ocean, no matter where you are, this view, when you play and sing on piano, looks the same. And so when mm -hmm. you were yeah. in that environment and you started to sing, I went, oh no. <laughs> it's like, oh, this girl's a problem. Uh, this is, this girl's, <laughs> oh this, this girl's crazy. Like this is, oh, she's really, 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 really special. And you were 16? Maybe 17 at the time. 17? I don't know. Probably 17. I think it was my junior year. Okay. And I just remember being floored. And I definitely wasn't, I know you didn't, I know you're just like going through the story. I definitely was like, wow, that's really great. I was like, oh, oh God. Oh, <laughs> wow. That was oh really great. Oh, shoot. <laughs> And then I remember you playing something and I could see that you were good. Like I could see that I could teach you something and you would catch it. You know what I mean? And so I was like, for sure, if for she sure. just added this one little thing right here, she'll use it forever. And the only reason I know how to play that thing is because someone did that to me. I was playing and someone goes, let me show you something real fast. So I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to show her this little thing real quick. Do -do 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 -do. And the thing, I know I the thing it, yeah. is, I actually have my keyboard right here. It, <laughs> You were playing like, um, you were playing like, I don't know. And I was like, do this. And then, and you're like, oh, sweet. And you picked it up instantly. Fast forward <laughs> mm, a couple different things. I saw. Three, three years later? Three years know. later. I saw, this is crazy. I did a video on Instagram of me doing a run. And I saw a random comment from a person I didn't know. And it just said Jade Cook. Shout out to Jade check, Cook. It was what's her name? Very good friend. Jade Cook. Very, very good friend of mine. Jade Cook. <laughs> she just commented and said, check out uh at at Sophia Wackerman's harmonization harmonization of this. And I was like, <laughs> she harmonized this girl, whoever this is, because I completely I, I did at this moment it wasn't connecting. I was like, there's a person who like harmonized this. This is a long run. I'm like, <laughs> okay, might as well listen to it. I opened it up and right at the top, when you went, I'm never wrong, that first one, I like freaked yeah. out and was like, I have to make a video to this. <laughs> and I stopped it and oh I didn't God. listen to any more. <laughs> Got a video, reaction video, lost my mind. Everybody lost their mind, then posted. Um, that's the most views and likes I think I've ever gotten on a video ever. Oh, wow. On I mean, anything well, I've ever same, done. Yeah, at the time, definitely. 
I mean, it was. I it just. I got more blew likes. Up way more than I thought it would. <laughs> I I got more likes on the video than I have ever gotten views of any video. <laughs> Like it, oh it was bananas. And the same thing happened the other day when I posted it. The same oh thing. Oh my gosh. I got more. What I got, I got, I got like, this is n like nothing to a lot of other people who are social media monsters, but I got like 12,000 likes on that video. Phew. And oh my I, gosh. my videos maybe get 10 or 12,000 views. If they did really well, mm. this got 12,000 likes anyway. <laughs> so saw that, that freaked out, bonkers. found out, found out you went to UCLA, lived in LA. Next time I was in LA, we connected to do the run live. And that's, I think when it hit me, no, I think it hit me before that, that from Lexi's party, that, that the connection was made. Oh, well, um, we, you, I reached out to you and I was like, um, thank you so much for, for reposting this video, um, and like reacting to it that, um, I'm a huge fan and that's the greatest honor ever. And you were like, oh yeah, uh, for sure. Like, um, you know, it's, it's really good stuff. Uh, and then you were like, this, this might sound really weird, but have we met before at like a birthday party? Okay. 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 Uh, okay. In, like Los Alamitos and I was like yes yes uh Lexi's 16th birthday party that okay. was me uh we sang and played together for one song and you were like oh my gosh no way what a small world um and then you were like what are you up to and I was like well actually coincidentally I'm um auditioning for Idol in November <laughs> and we talked about Idol for a little bit um but yes and then and then later on we reconnected uh when you came to LA and then um yeah, so it, so it was beforehand uh, that you had realized yeah. that we were, I was the same person. And then um, we ended up jamming with your super ridiculously talented roommates. She is bonkers. Sarah yeah. Eisen, I don't have words for her talent. I was really <laughs> shocked. I was really shocked she didn't keep on going in the show. Yeah, ev I think everyone was really shocked. Um Especially me, because uh, I'm her number one fan, and she's my best friend ever. And um, yeah, she's she's just uh, yeah. To to borrow a phrase, bananas. Um, yeah, she's insane. Because <laughs> every time I heard her sing on the show, and in real life, but every time I heard her sing on the show, she was crushing. Like, just sounded amazing. So it's just mm -hmm. very interesting. And sometimes the judges and the producers make decisions and we're just like, I don't know. I yeah. don't know. It's you never know. Cause I, I saw a lot of, of really amazing people get sent home before I did. And it, none of it made any sense to me mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. Um, which, you know, can sometimes turn into a little like imposter syndrome, but like it, just some of these people that like, um, Jordan Jones was another one that, that comes to mind. He got sent home after Hawaii and mm. he's maybe one of the best vocalists like on this planet at this time. Oof. Um, like, yeah, it's just, sometimes it doesn't make sense and, and they'll pick one person over another person because they're very similar or, you know, and they'll only need one of that kind of voice or, or you know, I, I don't know the logic of it. Totally. But, but, um, they got to curate, why, they got to so. curate their top 24 to present to America or, tw or 12 or 20 or whatever the number is that year. And um, mm -hmm. we had we had a couple girls on my season that were freaking killers, killers. Mm -hmm. Like every time they would sing, everybody would stop. Like I don't know if you guys had certain people in Hollywood Week and in different rounds, but in different rounds, certain people were just the the kings of those areas. Like they would sing totally. and be like, "There she is." Erica, um, yeah, was one girl's name. It was like she, every time she sang, it was like, "There she goes, she's gonna win, she's gonna this," and everyone was yeah. like. And then there's another girl named um, I, I actually don't know her full name. All I know is her name as she introduced herself, which is Jelly. 
Oh, cool. And she was a beast. And now she sings. She's crushing. She sings with, um, you probably know who this is, Tank and the... Tank something. and the Bangas. Yes. No so way. So she's one of the the singers, not Tank, but one of the other singers. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and she's killing it. They're they're fantastic. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there, she- there's one track um, that Jacob Collier did called In My Bones, and it features Kimbra and Tank and the Bangas, and it's like the most kick-ass track you've ever it's you i think you would really like it. it's really really funky and fun oh my gosh um, why haven't i but that's yeah yeah yeah. i'm writing it down called in, in my bones Jacob in my Collier. bones in <laughs> my bones i am assume you've heard jacob's in my room oh of course that's kind of what inspired me um to do the the song in the first place because i just am so in love with his arrangement of it <laughs> i thought so too i thought i was wondering that if that was an inspiration for you that mm, absolutely that's that's that might be my favorite cover of his i think it's also the least um i think it's the most like dressed down hmm. like it's like yeah, you've it's, got if you heard of his uh, flintstone because he has the uh, yeah he's got the ability to do the like crazy you know crazy musical stuff just like going all over the place and he does it with in taste but that one yeah it's it's really sort of <sighs> condensed and and it's simplified and but it's so beautiful still and the harmonies are so lush and and i don't know i I borrowed a couple chord changes um from Mm. that one because i just i love it (laughs) that okay but yeah i wish you had a keyboard in front of you right now because at the very end of uh in my room the very end of in my room you played i don't know what you did you did something on piano to like end it what was that how would you describe what you were playing um just kind of a descending line of intervals i don't know i I don't remember exactly what i did but um, that helps me zero what uh, what intervals (laughs) was it like just Uh, i mean what can you i can't even think do 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 uh major sixth i don't know what key were you in major sixth interval uh i was in c so i started i think it's so c to the to the e below it and then was that what i did there's just something really pretty i i I forgot exactly what it was it was something kind of like that i don't know what you that's what i'm asking next time we meet uh, you're gonna have to okay. show me because it was so pretty. Oh, I'll be, it'll be easier with the visuals for me. <laughs> yeah, just it's just oof, very tasteful. Okay. Ah, oh, thanks, thanks. I have some. Okay, this is my favorite part of of all the podcasts I've ever done in my life, which are two if we include this one. This is my favorite part. I've got some hypotheticals. No, we're not gonna do okay. hypotheticals yet. I've got some just general questions. All right. Who are your now hear me out here. Who are your three favorite artists? Now each artist of the three has a tier that they belong to. So who's your favorite artist that nobody knows? That's the bottom tier. Who's mm-hmm. your favorite artist that isn't a household name? Like isn't huge, but it's like Jacob Collier would be an example. But kind of middle tier. Oh, okay. Like people know who he sure. is, uh, or people know who this artist is, and then top tier, who's like a household name, everybody knows, everybody knows this person, and who's your favorite out of that top tier? Whoa. Okay. Um, bottom tier, like someone that nobody knows. Um, uh, the one that comes to mind is Gabriel Kahane. Gabriel um, Kahane. He's- Yes, he is, his music is beautifully complex um, and borrows a lot of of classical elements uh, into it, It, but it, but it's not classical music. It's, it's like singer songwriter, but he's got all these really gorgeous chord progressions and, and really Mm. poetic lyrics. Um, I'm trying to think, um. One one song I love is uh, "Ambassador Hotel" by him. Um, it's it's more of a folky guitar one. He kind of can like 
morph styles a little bit too like he's he's on guitar for some of them he's on piano for a lot of them um and then a lot of them are very orchestral um and just stunning and i am shocked that uh he's not more well known Mm. um i I dm'd him on instagram like a year ago or something um you know saying like i i admire your music so much and, and he responded um you know he's like oh thanks wow it's nice to hear from a fan you know like i i'm surprised that he's not getting those messages you know 24 yeah. 7 um yeah. so yeah gabriel kahane for sure uh how do you for, spell that how do you spell the, his last name uh k-a-h-a-n-e i believe dope i don't even know I... if i'm saying it right i think it's kahane okay or i, I can't wait i might be butchering it it's like um, when, yeah, when people have cool names like that, you, you're you just not going to know how they're pronounced until they have an interview <laughs> where yeah. you can go Google and watch their interview and see what the reporter says. Like that's really, mm-hmm. and sometimes they'll say it wrong and maybe they'll be, but until they get to a point where they're doing interviews, you're just not going to know how they say, how their name is, is pronounced. <laughs> that's, All right. That's next year. Yes. I, I hope he comes out with an interview because he's great um and uh oh another song by him really quick is underberg that's like one of my favorite songs um uh, of all time underberg it's beautiful it's it's piano underberg yes <laughs> um yeah it's uh lyrics are fantastic and and the, the piano line is gorgeous i can't okay wait to second to tier yeah he's great um second tier uh would would be jacob collier for sure um I just cannot give him enough praise. Um, we'll never give him enough praise. Uh, I think he is um, the musical genius of our of all geniuses of all t- of our time. Um, I will never understand how his brain works and how he understands all the little idiosyncrasies of music. Um, I, I wish I could, um, but yeah, just you know, uh, you're a fan of him too. Oh yeah. Uh, and you know he'll he'll create the most complex stuff you've ever heard but then also the most beautiful simple lullabies you know and everything in between mm. um mm-hmm. so yeah definitely jacob collier have you seen um, his uh master class on harmony that he posted uh i uh, yes on on his instagram yeah he he does yeah. a chord that i didn't even know you were allowed to do this <laughs> <laughs> but the chord is and you might know what i'm talking about it's it's a poly chord of all polys it is one two three four like chords on top of each other and it's a c7 yes. on and then a d major seven and then an e major seven and then an f sharp major seven all just on top of each other like this So there's his first chord. And then he <laughs> resolves it with this. And I was like, are you even allowed to do I mean, did, did how do you <laughs> what made you see the, how, why <laughs> Yeah. See the problem with music school is that they tell you not to do things like that. They tell you all the things that you, you know, that all the rules and and not to break them. But what Jacob Collier does is he knows all the rules and he knows how to effectively break them and and push the boundaries of of what is traditionally thought of as good or or right, technically. Um, And, you know, I just I wish I could do that effectively. (laughs) But yeah, that's crazy. I heard someone explain. I heard someone actually, I'm going to read you this text. There's a good friend of mine, Bernie Herms. He's a like wildly successful um, arranger and producer. He is, um, I'm pretty sure I should know this, but I'm pretty sure he, he has multiple awards for sure. And I'm pretty sure a Grammy or two is in that mix as well. I'm embarrassed that I don't know it. But he's like, he's also <laughs> um, married to Natalie Grant. Um, oh, anyway, yeah. 
he's he's amazing and uh he talks about jacob sometimes and he i think ex described him better than i've ever heard he said um jacob is i sent him the master class of the harmony thing and he replied he said mm -hmm. jacob is literally on his own planet he reps yeah. the bright <laughs> He said he represents the brightest future expansion of tonality while avoiding deconstruction of tonality like many 20th century classical composers went to find the future of sound. I feel like he'd mm. still be able to explain music theory if he was completely deprived of every single music theory book because it seems as though he may have known it instinctually far earlier than he knew it academically. Wow, that is a very accurate description. <laughs> oh my god! And this is a text. Yeah. This is how this guy like he. I, we're just like talking. I just sent him this video, and he's like, "Huh, brilliant." He's brilliant. But <laughs> I thought that was a great point. That yeah. In order to find the future of music, he didn't go into deconstruction like so many 20th century people have, who are who go like, "No, throw out all the rules." Um whole right. tone scales only and blah 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 and just like right yeah. like he went somewhere else right and and yeah. uh, of construction and i'm a big fan i was i was yeah. uh yeah i was managed <laughs> by the same company that managed jacob and i got to meet him a handful of times and we are oh friendly i wouldn't i wouldn't say we're we're friends because I don't have his number or anything. We don't talk and hang out, but we are oh my gosh. home. Like we're homies when we see each other. I guess is is what it is. But what's cool I can't about Jacob you've is been in the same room as him. That means. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I interrupted. Okay. No, 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 no. That's good. Okay. I was at a jam card event, which is like a musical jam thing that's really cool, and it's and it was a Quincy Jones night. And I was managed under Quincy Jones for a while, as Jacob was as well, or is as well. And Amazing. Oh my so gosh. Jacob was singing that night, and I was singing that night. And the, all the artists they had, like, on stage on a couch, and Quincy was there, and then a bunch of other people were there that were that were singing. And he was like, uh, he's, and we we knew each other by this point. So when he saw me, we said hello, and and we were in the green room. And he's like, uh, I think. I think I'm about to do the worst British accent of all time. So let me just get that out. Oh my there. gosh. Like, I'm excited I th for this. I think I'm, I'm going, I need to do a Michael Jackson song. Uh, Cause it was all Quincy Jones night. We all had to sing Quincy Jones songs. And um, mm -hmm. he's like, I think, I think I need to sing um, something uh, from Michael Jackson. Um, do you know the song she's out of my life? And I was like, yeah. He's like, do you, is it, is it good? I was like, I'm not crazy about it. He's like, okay, that'll work. He's like, okay, <laughs> cool. He's like, so I can do some stuff with it. No one's going to be, I, he didn't say this, but I imagine him thinking like, all right, cool. So I can do whatever I want with it. No one's going to freak out. So I can do whatever I want with it. <laughs> right. So I can Again, change it up and make it amazing. <laughs> that's not a Jacob Collier quote. Oh my gosh. That's what I presume <laughs> he was thinking. All he said was like, do you know the right. song? You like it? I was like, ah. Eh. He's like, okay, good. And just went on. He went on to do, you can find it on YouTube. He went on to do the most, cr just the craziest Jacob Collier thing with that song. And he didn't know what he was going to sing when he got there. And he sat down and he was like <laughs> listening to it, like in his ear. And just like, uh-huh, okay, all right. And so I was like watching him. He has perfect pitch to the scent. I'm not sure if you knew that. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, I, I did know but, this. And it's, and it's legitimate. So I was there in the in the studio with them, and then he was instructing people. And this choir was so good; he was actually telling them, "Like, could you, could you actually just raise it about three cents from where you are now?" And what was impressive is the choir could actually kind of do it. That's but what crazy. impressed me more than anything, what impressed me more than anything, is there was a singer, like the uh, director of that choir, was uh, was there, and then Jacob was asking him questions, and then did took like a miniature vocal lesson with him and jacob was like can you teach me can you teach me what's that i can oh how what am i doing wrong like how can i get higher or lower and like he oh, wow. is constantly like teach me teach me teach me how can i get better what's that wow. can you make me sing better teach me how to do this 
And if you notice, his voice was not his, his like, the thing that made him so special uh, five years ago. Sure. Five years ago, no one was like, oh my gosh, this guy's voice is crazy. Mm-hmm. He has gotten scary good vocally. Oh yeah, he's like, doing some crazy riffs and and that's the thing there, there's could... uh, there's one track that's like one of my favorites by him um time to rest your weary head and he does like a sort of a chromatic riff at one point i, I can't even do it myself it's sim sit me down and you know it's something like that but it's yeah. super fast and and like spot on and i'm like all right okay that just have you ever seen him live <laughs> Have you seen him live? No, unfortunately. I have not seen him live, but I would maybe give my left foot to see him live. <laughs> you you need you need to because I've always been a fan. When I saw him live, I was like, "Oh. Um, I think he's the best piano player I've ever seen." Wow. Like, he's a monster piano player. But when I saw him play piano live, he definitely has the best touch I've ever experienced like wow. the touch on the piano that he was playing and he i'm pretty sure he was playing a like backline piano so it wasn't his own personal piano it was a piano that they had there for him and the mm. touch that he was using on that the way that he could play the notes so softly and so perfect together in dynamic harmony and what i'm what i mean by dynamic harmony is literally how soft and how loud different notes are playing with each other and how those gel yeah. sure i was like oh i think he's i think he's the best piano player i've ever heard wow and he's in his early 20s mid 20s yeah i have no idea <laughs> he's, like, he's just he's a once in a generation kind of kind of musician at least at least yeah once in a super long biblical generation <laughs> like 500 years <laughs> like real long Big for generation real. for real. Okay, and next well, that, artist. That's a great. I mean, I I'm pleased to hear that he's, you know, so like coachable too, and and always you know trying to learn and stuff because that, you know, that gives hope to I think any musician. You know that like if they're constantly striving to learn and and striving for excellence, then like they can do anything. I think I that's I why know. he's so good. But too. he's Jacob Collier, is it? I think that's why he's so good too. <laughs> is because he's just constantly trying to learn more and trying to get better and better and yeah. better and better and better and better. Also, it's nice. Mm. What I, last thing I'll say about Jacob, and then I want to hear your superstar uh, tier artist. Um, last thing I'll say is what's really cool about Jacob is um, a lot of people who operate at such a genius level um, have like, they're a little socially awkward or they're they've got a little bit of maniacal twist to him. You know what I mean? Like just something's a little weird. <laughs> sure. He is like the kindest, most humble and the best players are humble. Like the best for real singers and for real players. They're always humble. You're never going to find those guys as totally. arrogant people, but he is mm-hmm. not only kind and sweet and humble, but he's like, the nicest guy, great conversationalist, like there's zero social like awkwardness with him, even though he has the IQ of probably like 170. Like he's <laughs> okay. wonderful. That's so awesome. Oh my gosh. I just, I can't believe I'm one degree of separation away from him because I know you and you have met him in the flesh. That's insane. If we are ever, <laughs> if we are ever, in the same city, you and I. And if I'm ever with Jacob, I will connect you to you two. I mean, uh, with the risk of me passing out, um, I would take that offer in a heartbeat. <laughs> I I will. Oh my gosh. And connect you as in like, hi Jacob, this is my friend Sophia. She's a beast, and he'll be like, oh my goodness, da da da. Can you sing for me? <laughs> like. It'll be great. It'll and then be great. he'd hear me try to talk about music and he'd be like, wow, you know nothing. <laughs> no. Okay. Last thing I'll say about Jacob. That's the cool thing about him. Do you remember when he was doing the I harm you thing? 
and he's getting like random videos and then he would have oh, random yes. videos of people singing and then he'd do crazy harmonizing things to him. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. with like the Quincy team, like they would receive a lot of those videos and then they would filter them. And then he would, they would be like, oh man, Jacob, some of these videos are bad, right? Like some of these <laughs> videos are yikes. And he would listen to him and he's like, that's so interesting how they're going down. Like, six or seven cents here they're in the middle yeah they're flat they're in between two notes but so interesting i wonder what we could do there i think it's beautiful like he like someone who can't sing he's like wow Wow. i think that's beautiful and here's how we can make that work and what an incredible and i think that's also why he's so special is because he takes in every sonic thing in existence and takes it in is like (laughs) awesome you know what I mean? Wow. All of it. It's like, cool. Even bad singers. He's like, I mean, interesting. I can, well, that's interesting. And I, he can accept the way that it's different, you know? Hmm. And appreciate Man, it. Man, I would love to have the power to do that. I'm so nitpicky about everything, you know? And it's, yeah. it's a real sort of, it's an inhibitor almost, <laughs> you know? I think it's I something w- that I grows. I wish I had. I think it's something that grows. I think it's something that grows. Like, like I was that way hmm. too. And then slowly I'm like, you know what? I'm finding the the pleasantries and the imperfections, as corny as that sounds. Um, True. But if you think about it, some of the greatest records of all time didn't have auto-tune. They didn't have right, that's true. the engineering capabilities that we have today. And there are some notes. Uh, I don't know if you're a Bobby Darren fan or if you're familiar. Um, Bobby Darren is the guy that sang um, old, like, crooner back in the day. He sang... Um, oh, cool. Hello, Dolly. Well, hello, hello Dolly. Dolly. It's so okay, yeah, nice yeah. to have you back where you belong. Da, 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 he sang this one song, da, 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 and I wish I could think of it. And he ended the note flat, like flat, 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 oh, no. flat. And <laughs> it, it was in. It was a live recording, and the rest of the song was so good they just kept it. And after I've listened to it enough <laughs> times, I want that note. I want that flat note. I want it. Nice. I want it. Nice. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> I, so I don't know. Yeah, it's, yeah. I think it's mental, but I think it's, it, I think, I think it grows. Like, I think you'll grow into it more like, like letting yeah, some things go. <laughs> it's a weird dichotomy of wanting it right, but also understanding the beauty Accepting of imperfections. The flaws and, yeah, man. It's kind yeah. of a metaphor for life too. I guess. <laughs> music is a great Isn't metaphor it? for life <laughs> it, yes right. yes it is anyway <laughs> next tier um uh yes top tier is really difficult to okay. choose um all right i think i'm i'm teetering between sarah Barella's and hosier i mean Those i i don't know if so if, cl- those are so close to high, high, high middle tier. Really? I'm going to say. Okay. I'm yeah, say I, I wasn't sure if tier. it's like a super big household. I don't, I don't know if Hosier is like It a, would have to every be. Household you could name. literally not find an individual that doesn't know who this person is. Okay. Like you can't. I could find, um, I could find someone who doesn't know who. Uh, Hosier is, and I could find someone that doesn't know Sarah Bareilles is. That'd be hard, but I'm talking like pop icon type, like a Lady Gaga, like a Bruno Mars, like a those kinds of like you're just not gonna find right. anybody who doesn't know who this person is. All right. Um, do they have to be living um, currently? Um. Nah. Okay. Um then that puts me between Stevie Wonder and the Beatles. Yeah. They're, they're very different. Yeah. I'm with I actually right with you but, on that. But but it's it's apples and oranges. Yeah. I mean Stevie you know, has one of the best voices of all time and and we've talked about this before I think the way he takes really complex uh you know musical phenomenons and and intertwines it into pop music in a way that it's like almost undetectable 
Yeah. You know, like yep. like he he makes these really complex musical decisions, but it doesn't sound complex. He makes it sound really it, you know, you hardly even notice it as an average, you know, non-musician yes. listener. And I think, I think that's one of the hardest things to do. <laughs> that's the um, goal. And that it, you're right. That is the hardest thing. And his stuff just slaps. His music just slaps. Are we kidding? Higher ground? That intro? <laughs> yes. Like nothing will be, will, will beat that. Nothing, no intro will ever beat that. You know, it just, it just oh, gets right oh, totally under right. your soul. Just like makes you move you know all of it, it and he's got so yeah. many songs he's got so many yes. songs and so many Such amazing a vast catalog. songs he's got songs that if another person would have a fifth of those songs they would also be known as one of the biggest artists ever and one of the greatest artists mm-hmm. ever but he's got five times totally. i mean he's got right. so many beautiful 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 songs my favorite key change of all time is in lately um lately da, 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 da. yeah yeah it's uh and he goes uh, uh that's the one the uh. oh my premonition misses but what i really feel my eyes won't let me hide because they always start And then he goes, so we're in C, right? Okay. And then he goes like this. This is how he does a change. Best key change of all time. Cause it's time could mean goodbye. Uh, shoot. now we're in f yeah it's like and you you don't even notice it you know exactly right that's exactly right because the thing what's crazy about that is like Susie from arkansas can sing what i just did like she can sing that and she doesn't even sing she can sing the happy birthday song and she can sing stevie wonder song like yeah (laughs) that's what's so impressive so impressive and you're right that is the goal ultimately Mm -hmm. that's the goal for people like you and people like me who have a taste and a love for complexities of music our goal is to make pop people be into the and yeah. all these crazy things like that's that's the goal that's the goal yeah yeah you want to keep it enjoyable for i mean i don't know sometimes when things are too complex or like too jazzy you know it like turns a lot of people away and it's like i of course. i don't know how to listen to this a lot of people the reason jazz is you know some people say that it's dying is some like most people don't know how to listen to jazz you yeah. know like they don't know what to listen for or Mm -hmm. or how how to take it in you know and so that's that's what's so genius about about stevie is because he puts these like elements of jazz into it yeah and i I don't think jazz is dead but that's a whole other (laughs) spiel sure (laughs) i I think jacob's doing that too like he's there's a lot of songs that jacob plays that are too much for most people a lot of people Mm -hmm. that i know they're like i i just can't get a hold of it like he it's just so much but there, are, there, are, especially mm-hmm. lately, there are more and more and more and more and more songs that he's doing that are just, I don't care who you are, you're gonna love that. John Mayer's another yeah. person who's been doing that for a long time, having like crazy yeah, yeah, yeah. musical changes, crazy musical things happening, and everyone loves it. No one's like, oh, that totally. was weird, that was too much. Like it de- right. He, he he's able to play it without <laughs> people even getting to the headcock part of their listening which yeah. is in i don't know exactly it's interesting john mayer's my top tier really yeah he's a he's a good one um but yeah. i usually go for people that are like currently fans 
or like that are currently doing music. But okay. I wanted to open it up because okay. I wanted to so, hear your answer. Okay. So then, so the Beatles would then be pushed aside because they are no longer, um, I don't know if you've heard, but the Beatles are no longer together um, and, and I've making heard that, music. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, mm. unfortunately. But I guess Stevie Wonder um, would count because he's still touring. I mean, no one's touring right now, but he, he still Paul tours. McCartney? I mean, he's still just so, he's still got it, you know? Oh, I, don't, I don't know if you've yeah. heard um, his, one of his latest albums. One of my favorite songs by him is one of his recent songs called Come On To Me. And it's so good. Like, it's just, it's it's not I'm even, the lyrics aren't even that complex or anything, but it, it's so fun. And the, and the refrain is so catchy and it's just... You know, it's very reminiscent of, of the Beatles. And I don't know. I just, I think he's one of the greatest songwriters that ever lived. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. I think, him and, and him I say and this Lennon very, both. I say this like very boldly. Two things. One about the Beatles, one about Stevie. People who say the Beatles are overrated don't get me upset anymore because it proves to me that they've never listened to the Beatles <laughs> really listened past like mm. i wanna i get it if all i ever heard was i wanna hold your hand and that was everyone was like <laughs> greatest band of all time i understand how one could think they were sure. overrated if that's all they knew about the beatles but when you hear uh because the world is round or be, because yes. the world is, is that yeah it's i think it's called because when you hear um like norwegian wood when you hear yeah. yesterday, Julia, come on, is, is one, Julia, yesterday is one of the like, best songs ever written, yes. ever, yes, ever, ever, ever. Yes, Let yes, it be, yes. even. I, I mean, yeah, like makes me cry every time. <laughs> yep, yep. Just um, and then what was I going to say yeah, about Stevie the, Wonder? And it's such a, I was going to say they were they weren't even together for that long, and they they also have such a massive catalog, you know, just that. And and you such a so drastic right evolution that. too. Yeah, yeah. There's like hundreds <laughs> of Beatles songs out there, mm-hmm. and they were together for four years. And Yoko yeah, Ono was like in that. there at some at yeah. some point. So like that didn't even count. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Gosh. Okay. Yeah, so I don't know. They're up there too, but 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 if we're not um, talking about or including people that currently are functioning as a as a musical unit um i will um say that stevie wins okay uh, for my spot of of top tier okay fair enough all right i got another question (laughs) and this one is actually my favorite and believe it or not there's usually i think i'm going to start sending this sending people the question before we start the podcast because it's a hard one and people, oh, it, no. it'll, it's going to hurt your head and it's going to be difficult oh, to no. choose, but it's really, I love it. It's a hypothetical. Are you ready? Oh no. I don't know if I'm ready, but ask it anyway. Okay. You, Sophia, have been given the job. This is extending a little bit. Have been given the job <laughs> in heaven to produce a variety show of sorts, a musical variety show. And your cast is six people, three guys, three girls. You can pick three male artists, dead or alive, have them in their prime. And three female artists, dead or alive, they're in their prime. And a host. Anyone in the world, dead or alive, ever, is the host of your show. Who are your people? Um, wow. I understand why you want to send this question beforehand. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a talent show. And, and like, like, they would be playing their own catalog, most likely. Not a talent show. Of... 
it's it's a it's a show you're producing it it can be whatever kind of show you want it to be they're going in they're doing duets with each other they're doing group songs all together they're doing solos they're doing whatever you want them to do so let me give you an example my um i had a friend that i asked and and she was like i'm gonna have a my show would be a songwriter show and it would just be kuz guitar and the songwriter on the stool on a stool and they just talk about their songs and they just play songs no band no nothing just that's it she had like don henley paul simon um like so people like that and that was her show because she wanted a songwriter show I want a show that's going to okay. blow your freaking mind apart and you're going to say, oh my gosh, that was the best show of all time with the best performers of all time. That was the best ever. That's the show I want to make. You can make whatever show you want to make with whoever you want to do, uh, whoever you want to be in it. Three guys, three girls, and a host. The host can be musical. The host can be non-musical. host can be literally any living person of all time. You have five seconds. I know that I'm what, just kidding. Oh, okay. Well, I, I know that whatever I say right now, I'm going to wake up in the middle of the night and think, oh, I should have said this person. You know? That's okay. That's um, okay. Uh, okay. Well, okay. Um, oh, I, I'm like debating. Do I want to make this, this a musical? Like have almost a narrative cool. of songs like written specifically for this show that tells, you know, one big story. And like there are performers that come out and, and play their, their respective song that they've written or, or duet with, you know, one another. Um, I think it would be kind of cool to like have a, not necessarily a musical, but like um, some kind of narrative show, but it's, it's, um, you know, only, the story is told through songs cool. that the Love it. that the musicians have written. Um uh so Joni Mitchell would be in there for sure. Um okay. because her, you know, um narration through song is is unparalleled. Um Randy Newman. Love um, it. Uh, and you know, he, he, he could write, you know, big musical numbers or, or, or very, you know, intimate ballads or, or whatnot. Um, okay. Joni Mitchell, Randy Newman. Um, I want Stevie Wonder in there. Uh, I want his voice in there. I want his music in there. Um, Great. Oh, man. Randy Newman and Stevie Wonder, that's dope. Yeah, I mean it's it's not exactly like them same writing songs together style, but you know, in it's it's not gonna be I think it's a show that has one one uh, specific genre. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh yeah, agreed. Okay, that's you got room spots. for one more guy. You got room for one more guy, and, more and you got room for two more girls. Oh, my gosh. This is so unbelievably difficult. I know. I know. Um, I'm debating, for the last guy, I'm debating between James Taylor and mm. Hosier. Um, wow, you like him that much. Hosier, you like him that much. I really do. He was the artist that made me realize what kind of music I like. Wow. Like, it just, I, I cannot talk highly enough of him. Wow. Um, uh, oh. See, here's the thing. I, I want to say James Taylor, but, but we've, we've already got Joni Mitchell, even though they're, they're entirely different artists. Like, I don't know. They, they do have a similar. They they've both got the folk thing going on, um, and there are similar vibes. Um, and also, Randy Newman and James Taylor have already done Faust together, Faust. which is kind of um, 
I'm thinking this is like a Faust type show. Um, yeah. It's just a bunch of musical numbers that create a narrative. Um, I think I want to throw Sarah Barella or, or, or Carol King. Um, <laughs> mm. <laughs> you got, you got room uh, for two. Right. Um, but like part of me wants Beyonce, you know, <laughs> like, ha, um, that's great. Yeah. She wouldn't be amazing. You know, just cause she'd come out there and just rip everything to shreds and, and yeah, you know, she's the most entertaining performer of our time, I would say. And, and incredible, one of the most incredible vocalists. I think I would put Beyonce in there. Um, good choice because I, she's unmatched. Um, and did you come did you come through with a guy our third guy did you decide oh man i think i'm gonna say hosier because he can sort of bridge the gap between the folk and the soul okay yeah i'll i'll go with hosier though james taylor would be it's man but but we are Faust already exists, so that's I don't know. And it's freaking um, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, and uh, oh, you, dead or alive? Yeah, 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 dead or alive in the prime. Aretha. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no question. What a Sorry, show. Sorry, I, I forgot. We Yeah, okay. <laughs> Aretha Franklin, Beyonce, yeah. and Joni Mitchell with Randy Newman, Stevie Wonder, and Hosier. Yeah. That's, that's my show. And the host... Yeah, who's your host? ...would be... Um, Robin Williams. Nice. I don't know. I you know. That's a good show there yeah (laughs) um okay this is great i'm i'm like right on with your three girls i'm right on with randy newman and stevie Mm -hmm. wonder together i think that's brilliant and i all i can think of is the music that they would write together and make in production wise yeah i'm just gonna have to learn about hosier i didn't know he was good like that i didn't know he was i didn't know he was better than james taylor like that well, he's. I wouldn't say that he is. I wouldn't classify him as better than James Taylor because I personally think James Taylor is one of the greatest songwriters to ever exist. Yeah, and of musicians for that matter. Um, I just, if this were my personal, and he's, he, uh, he almost made the cut. Um, and if if I could have four, I would definitely put James Taylor in there. But if this were my my show for like my selfish purposes of okay. listening to the music that i want to listen to i would say hosier just because like he is actually my favorite artist of all time all right he's your like, favorite he's, artist he's of very, all time of of this time of of okay. this current time i guess my favorite <laughs> artist of this time love it all right okay do you want to hear mine yes mine change often uh like yours yeah, and i'm sure i'm sure mine too. is gonna change often of too i have one person in in my uh six that i'm convinced if someone doesn't have them they're wrong they're okay. just wrong if they don't have this person in there <laughs> that person is michael jackson oh i could see that I and the only that. reason is because I'm not even going to say I think he is. He just is. He's the greatest musical entertainer of all time. So yeah, how am I, I not going to put the greatest musical entertainer of all time <laughs> in my show? You know what I mean? Yeah, that is a good point. That is a good point. I got Michael Jackson, yeah. uh, Ray Charles. Yeah. Ray yeah, Charles yeah, yeah. is so overlooked in, in uh, ballads. He's got mm. some ballads that oh my gosh he's got one that's talks about oh man 
I can't think of what it's called right now, but it says something about like at the very end, he's like, somebody like I'm, I'll, I'll die and go to heaven with my mom or something like that. And it's just, Oh man. Oh my God. <laughs> like I'm already crying. <laughs> oh, of course. Man. Like, and his ballads are fire. So, and I actually prefer his voice over Stevie Wonder, even though I think Stevie Wonder is the greatest artist of all time. I'm very confident mm, about okay. that. Like, I'm, that's a very bold opinion to have. I'm down to have that argument with anybody. As far as straight voice, I prefer Ray Charles, which is hard to say, sure. but I do. So I've got Michael Jackson, Ray Charles, and my third is one that changes a lot. And the third, I think I'm going to go with John Mayer. Because I'd love to have a piano genius. And I'd love to have a dancing monster, just an entertainment, entertaining freak. And then <laughs> John Mayer doing guitar solos and arranging and all of those things. And then doing his thing. Yeah. For the females. That'd be sick. That'd be sick. For the females, I've got Celine Dion. Ooh. Jennifer Holiday. Have you ever heard? Have you ever watched her sing? Um, and you, and you, and you, you're gonna love me. Gonna love me. You ever seen that YouTube I don't video? Think I've, heard, I've heard her version of it. The best. So she's the original, Heffy. The best oh, okay. vocal performance I've ever seen, ever, of anyone, ever. Oh, wow. I'll okay. send you the link. It's a YouTube I'll, I'll video of her doing it for like a Broadway, it's like a Broadway, uh, an awards thing. And they mm -hmm. do it for the awards thing. Best, it's the best, I've, I've never seen anything like that. So she's got to be in there for me. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm going to have Bonnie Raitt. Oh, that's a good one. That is a good one. Variety, there's your show. That's a good, that is a killer show <laughs> oh my host my host i struggle with struggle with yeah. i think i think of um i think of like uh stand-up comics a lot um like do you know who uh nate bargatsky is i don't unfortunately he's a, he's not huge like so he's not like oh my gosh you don't know who this he's just a stand-up comedian okay. right now he's doing really well he's really really funny and his voice is funny but you know who else I had who I think would be amazing is Sammy Davis Jr. Oh, sure. Yeah. He was known as like really funny, great dancer, and just a crowd pleaser. Such a character. And the dude is a monster singer. I don't know if you've ever heard The Birth of the Blues. Go listen to Sammy Davis Jr., Birth of the Blues. You will lose your mind on the singer, down. on the pipes. <laughs> That this guy has. Junior. Birth of blues. Okay. Written down. I will look it up. <laughs> okay. So that's a good show. That's a good show that yeah. you have. Um, a couple more. I agree. <laughs> one more hypothetical question. It's much easier. And then uh, just <laughs> another goodness. question and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. But if you could pick one instrument and you would be the best player at that instrument in the world. You'd be the best whateverist in the world. And you would can you'd keep everything you know right now. So you'd be able to play everything exactly how you do now, but you'd be able to be the best whateverist in the world. What instrument do you pick? <laughs> That's okay, well that is than the last question but not an easy question mm -hmm. um see part of me wants to i have three that came to mind immediately uh the first that came to mind was saxophone because that would be so sick to just play oh, like would. to just just play like coltrane basically um <laughs> and kenny g on um, kanye west last album yeah. <laughs> are you aware of what i'm talking about the the kanye had a, the last album that came out the yes. yeah, christian yeah, yeah. thing 
And then Kenny G has that saxophone solo. That's Kenny G. Do you know what saxophone solo I'm talking about? Yes, yes, I it's do. It's yeah. crazy. Legendary. So you'd be able to Legendary. play like Coltrane and Kenny G whenever you wanted to. I, I, that's a good yeah. one. And just, but, you know, it would just like be so cool to, you know, be like, yeah, I play the saxophone and I'm the best saxophonist in, on the earth. You know, like that would be. <laughs> yes. Like, wow. Like, you know, there's something really like just, I think just so badass about that. Oh, yeah. But then, um, but then the second thing that came to mind was um, piano because uh, there's so much you can do with the piano. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's so universal and, and you could literally, I mean, like, gosh, 88 keys, you know, like, and to yeah. be the best at that <laughs> would be really convenient, I think. Um Especially if I wanted to keep singing too, because um, you can't sing and play saxophone at the same time. At least not to my knowledge. You know, maybe somebody does <laughs> right. that, which I'd, well, I would love to see that. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say I'd, it's impossible. No one's ever done that, and never will. Uh, I'll just plant the yeah, seed. Okay, well. If someone needs to, someone needs that. I mean, like, nothing I'm is be impossible. The first. I bet somebody is going to see this video quote that you saying nobody is ever going to sing and play saxophone at the same time and they're going to make a video and say watch this clark beckham and then they're going to sing they're going to like play saxophone and sing and somehow great that would be worth it to me (laughs) let me plant that seed of like no you can't (laughs) to make the person do it that's great i'll be that person yeah i I would love to see that happen please somebody do that please to spite clark beckham yes Um, (laughs) spite me (laughs) i'm kidding i'm kidding um uh, and then uh, the third was is also a more practical one, um, but guitar, because uh, I would just, I mean, I, I'm not the best at guitar, let's be real, um, and I'm constantly trying to get better at it. But I think, like, if you know, to be the best guitarist on the planet, that would be so cool. And also, you know, uh, the point with being able to sing and play at the same time. And just like, yeah, absolutely shred. Um, yes, <laughs> would be so fun. I think. I think. I don't know. I I get asked sometimes, like, do I prefer guitar or piano? And I think I prefer guitar. I mean, even though I I am better at playing the piano. Interesting. I think I prefer the uh-huh. sound and the feeling of the guitar. Um, I don't know. Just it like creeps into my soul a little bit more uh interesting yeah but i don't i don't know i mean i think it would probably be guitar between guitar and piano um probably probably piano because of the versatility okay even though it's, it's a basic i understand that it's a like a basic instrument but um I don't know. Well, if you're also if you're It'd the be greatest cool to to be a like a bassoon player or something, you know, just like You know what? I, know. I <laughs> this sounds like a name drop and I don't mean it to be, but it's the silliest. It's because of who it is why it's so ridiculous to me. Um so I had the incredible opportunity to have Steve Jordan, who's John Mayer's drummer and has many other accolades, um play on uh a single that I had that I released and he also produced it. And I wow. asked him this question. I said, all right, you have one instrument. You can choose any instrument and you'll be the best in the world at that instrument. What instrument do you pick? Do you know what he said? Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to play the oboe. I was like, come on. No, See? you would not. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to play the, he goes, <laughs> he goes, He's like, I'm pretty much play everything else. I'm, I'm I'll just play the oboe. And I was like, man, no, you would not get out of here, bro. No, you would not. So thank you for not saying the oboe. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Well, my my parents always they always wanted me to play a more obscure instrument growing up because they were like, well, it it'll be easier to like be the you know be at the top of the game at at. Um, with a less popular instrument because there's sure. fewer people that play that instrument, you know? So like mm-hmm. scholarships, Sophia, you know, I was like, eh, I want to play the piano and the violin, you know? And they're like, ah, fine. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. 
But yeah, it's true. It's it's true. But I'm I'm glad you decided to stick with the piano, <laughs> and uh, and those things. Um, okay. Here's a question I get asked a lot, and I have. Uh, I'm not completely sure what I think. I think I know what I think, but there's some doubt in there too, and I want to know what you think. Okay. Are runs learned? Or are they just something you're born with to be able to do vocal runs? Oh, learned. Learned completely. Because if you asked me to do a run when I was 13 years old, I would give you a sound that came straight the from the underworld. <laughs> um, like, n- uh, absolutely, positively, 200% learned. Okay. And, and um, I experienced this still... To this day, um, I will listen to a run and attempt to do it, and I can't, and then I'll, I'll practice it over and over. Kind of like the um, video that I harmonized to you uh, in. Yeah. Um, I When I first heard that, I was like, whoa, that's really ridiculous. And I tried doing it, and I was like, I, I couldn't do it. And then I practiced it over and over again, and then eventually I was able to do it. So, yes, run is runs. I am a firm believer so he, that they come. Here's the argument. Here's the argument, though. When I say that to people, they're like, well, of course you can do the run after you practice because you have the (laughs) natural ability that it takes to be able to run. And that's what I'm like. All right, well, I'm stuck here. But I know singers that that are good singers and try to run. They can't do it. They can't. They can't run. They can't do it. They try and try and try and try and try and they can't. And I'm still convinced that part part of me says that like I've been trying to do runs since I was like six or seven. So like part of me is like, well, I've just I mean, when I was in my developmental years, I was trying to copy uh, Stevie Wonder and I was trying to copy my dad. And they both Mm -hmm. sang a lot of runs. And I didn't know that runs were special when I was learning to sing. I thought that's just how you sang. Because I grew up hearing my dad sing a bunch of runs, hearing Stevie Wonder sing, Ray Charles stuff. Like, I just thought, oh, that's just a thing that singers do. And people who start trying at age 20 and then after five minutes of trying can't do it. (laughs) And then they just say, oh, well, you just have it naturally. Some people can do it and some people just can't. That's when I get a little frustrated. That's... That was exactly, um, that was going to be my counter argument, um, was that I think it depends on what you're listening to in your developmental years as a musician. Mm. Like I, I, I grew up in, in my early childhood, I was a big theater kid and I listened to a lot of musical theater. And as a child, if you listen to like videos of me singing, I sound very like meh and very like classic Broadway like <laughs> you know kid sort of musical theater e um and when I a little when I grew up a little bit like maybe my tween years I started digging really deep into like Aretha and like I don't know listening to more like Beyonce and stuff and and I was like I really like this you know this is the kind of music that I want to be listening to more and um and I would, yeah, I would try to like emulate them and I would you know, sing along and, and I would listen to it and it would just sort of soak into my brain. And, and, um, that's, you know, that's when I think my voice developed mostly in, into, I don't know. And, and my voice I, I find is always changing too. Um, like in the past few years, it, even it's changed, but, um, like that was a big, developmental time for my voice was like my tween years and and um Mm. that's when I sort of started experimenting with runs and and riffs and everything um so Mm. I I definitely absolutely was not born with it (laughs) yeah Um, I think it was a thing that just developed over time and time and time and lots of time and practice and practice and practice I agree (laughs) I agree with you I'm on I'm you have you have solidified my answer and my thought. <laughs> I was I get swayed sometimes by people, but um, I'm sticking to it next time. Um, listen, yeah, yeah. I'm v- I'm very confident in that. 
Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah. Same. I never doubt it either. Totally. Um, listen, I am a huge, huge, huge fan of yours. I have been from the first time I ever heard you sing Aww. at that piano, especially it was the piano when I was like, oh, this girl. Um, I was so excited when you told me that you were going to try Idol. The moment, the moment you told me you were going to try out for Idol, I was like, if she gets to the judges, because there's a lot of weird things that happen before that and some great people don't make it. But if she mm -hmm. gets to the judges and the producers are like, yeah, we'll give this girl a shot on our show. I know she's going to be top 10. I know that I know that I know that Aww. I know that I know that I know that I know she's going to be top 10. Oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> and I believe fully that if we had um, more time and the cuts weren't so crazy like they are. Um, you'd have been top five, top three, easy. And I didn't think you were going to win because the most talented kind. person never wins. And I feel so <laughs> stupid saying that as someone who didn't win. I'm not referring to myself. I'm not referring to myself. I'm not referring <laughs> to myself. I'm just referring to the history of American Idol. But I knew you were going to go far. I knew America was going to fall in love with you. And those two things, I was spot on. And I can't wait Aww. to hear um, the music that you make after this. Uh, whenever that is, if that's t right now, if that's in 10 years, I don't want that, that, that <laughs> Hopefully to sound not like any years. type of pressuring. Hopefully within the <laughs> upcoming I, year. I, all this to say, Gosh. thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for doing this. It's been a real pleasure talking to you as a fan of yours and also as, as a friend. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I, I am, will always be one of your biggest fans. Thank you. You're wonderful. And I will, uh, I'll talk to you later.